The announcement of these layoffs over the past week and the fact 143 jobs at the studio have been lost is terrible all in and of itself. But there is another thing that's bad that's kind of come from this for ArenaNet, and that's that their hand has been forced in revealing the development of secondary tertiary or even more projects at the studio. Despite the fact that eagle-eyed fans may have seen evidence for it already, the mantra at ArenaNet definitely seems to have been to act as if these projects do not exist at all. The message and impression they wanted to get to the general public, the average fan, being that Guild Wars 2, ever since it released, was getting 100% of the funding and attention. And it's obvious why you do that. Guild Wars 2 is trying to be a lifestyle game where people play it as a main thing for years on end. They spend gems thinking that they're supporting just this game. To have it blatantly known and regularly talked about that the studio is working on other things but you in the community don't get to know anything about them would just sow discord, would just suggest that Guild Wars 2 has some kind of a shelf life and would de-incentivize people from providing funding to the studio that it so desperately needs. Now, in truth, I think anyone who follows the industry, even without the small little tidbits that have come out throughout the years suggesting ArenaNet is working on other stuff, can probably tell that they have to be making something else. That you don't have a studio of that size that puts all of its eggs in that one basket forever and ever and ever. That there needs to be R&D in at least some capacity on something else. Now, to the degree it now appears ArenaNet had been investing in the something else, maybe we can dispute. But I personally find it very hard to disagree with the idea in the first place. Maybe you in the audience struggles to believe in that right now, as we've seen nothing come from it at all. But just try to imagine how excited you might have been if, in the year between Path of Fire and Heart of Thorns, ArenaNet had announced some flashy new trailer demoing gameplay from some truly next-gen game that looked really exciting. And then the same perhaps had happened last year, the year after Path of Fire, and between whatever comes next for Guild Wars 2 now. If there had been promotional material there and these projects had actually got to the stage where they were green to go, then the fruits of the labour and the idea would have been laid clear. You would have had something to be really excited about, potentially buy, and ArenaNet's whole new flashy life as a multi-game studio probably would have been something we deeply supported. Obviously, none of that happened, and now disaster struck the studio as the publishers moved in several years later. ArenaNet has publicly confirmed the existence of these side projects, but we in the public are not privy to know what they were or why they never became a thing. Was it expanding too fast, the management, the talent on them at all, or whether they were just bankable projects in the first place, we can't know. But on that last note, I do think we can do some interesting speculation. What might ArenaNet have considered a bankable project that would earn them money and success and accolades? And if those have failed, can we guess why? Beyond snooping on salty glass door reviews about management. So I actually quite like thinking about this. Uh, being a person who has covered the actions of the studio since before Guild Wars 2 even existed, there are a lot of different things to draw on over time. I particularly remember hearing that the genesis of the Super Adventure Box was a result of the studio being told they were allowed to have like free time to just experiment and think of things. And I wonder now if that was in service of kicking something new up in those uh, sort of early-ish Living World Season 1 days. Uh, exact dates would be very hard to find but I do want to give you guys a bit of a list of different things and tip-offs we've had. Number one, let's open on mobile. Now, if the devs were doing something for a mobile platform, which I think is very likely, it was probably quite recent. It's in the more recent years we've seen job posting specifically for mobile developers. I think it was only a month ago, right before all this kicked off, uh, if you snooped on what they were hiring for, they were looking for a performance and pipeline engineer for Unity 3D iOS games. Who else remembers this Reddit thread from last year in which Razor1234567891 compiled a known list of all the talent at the studio they knew about working explicitly on mobile stuff? So it makes sense something was going on. 
Back before Guild Wars 2 came out, they released some blog posts about various features they intended to be in the game, several of which never made it in in the end, like Barb Rule and also the Extended Experience, software that existed outside of the game itself that allowed you to interact with Guild Wars 2. Things like your friends list, the trading posts, locations of where your guild mates were currently leveling and whatnot. And it was for your mobile device or tablet. Now, a lot of the discussion now in 2019 about, oh, we're arena networking on something mobile, people harken back to the extended experience. Personally, I think that that's a little bit too old. I especially remember some statements from the very small team they had looking at that after the game came out and it wasn't a thing, confirming that it had basically just been killed. I think whatever mobile push that ArenaNet might have been doing in recent years would have been very separate to that. And frankly, revolving more around the fact that now there's a lot of money to be earned in mobile video games. It's not impossible to think that at a studio of ArenaNet's side, some people had passion for a project on that platform. Particularly, look at the company culture at ArenaNet, the main thrusts and drives for them when it came to making both Guild Wars 1 and 2, when it came to rebelling against the status quo, when it came to realizing there was something great about MMOs, but they were bagged down by all these other negative aspects and were getting a bad reputation. That's the world we live in with mobile gaming at the moment. People are deeply cynical of them, and I can imagine ArenaNet believing they can swoop in just as they did with Guild Wars 2 to identify what isn't working, what gives mobile gaming the reputation it has, and provide something awesome for the kind of gamer they really identify with that feels so estranged from the entire market right now. That could be exactly the thing ArenaNet excels at. Even if you don't buy all that, and they might be excited by such prospects, you have to look at the publisher, NCSoft, who themselves are clearly interested in mobile development. In November just last year, we're only talking a couple of months ago, they unveiled lots of MMOs for mobile. Line Lineage 2 Mobile, Ion 2, Blade & Soul 2, Blade & Soul Mobile, Blade & Soul S, all new upcoming mobile projects based on their existing MMO IPs, that being Lineage, Aeon, and Blade and & Soul. So you're telling me that ArenaNet, a subsidiary of NC Southwest, with the hirings we've seen they've been going for, isn't cooking something up for mobile? I think it's pretty likely they were. One thing you might now be wondering, as I certainly am, is what kind of mobile experience were they hoping to deliver? If you look on just NCSoft's end, it's pretty clear they're still invested in MMOs, big long-term lifestyle experiences that they get a user base that doesn't shuffle away for a long time on. Is that true for ArenaNet also? I think maybe yes, a full-scale MMO for Western markets on mobile. There does seem to be a bit of a niche for it, and maybe ArenaNet would have been the ones to deliver. I am curiously drawn to a stream several years ago now, where a developer mentioned how they had successfully been emulating Guild Wars 1 on their iPad, and the experience of the original game had scaled down super well. I wonder if around then was the gen genesis for such an idea as this. Hell, on the community's end, so many people are clamoring for a Guild Wars 1 remake, something I personally am not too on board with. Uh, maybe the idea of a Guild Wars 1 remake for mobile, like a mobile port of it, in the climate we find ourselves in, would have been an idea taken quite seriously. The only th other thing I can think ArenaNet might have been doing for mobile is something often trotted out by the general Guild Wars 2 community that I don't actually think is that great. Uh, it's more of a cynical joke to me than anything else, but that's of Polymok Go. Polymok, of course, being a Pokemon-inspired minigame from Guild Wars 1 that could have been a minigame in the sequel, ended up being cut for time. The Polymok arenas still exist at Ratasum, you just can't visit them. And with the success of Pokemon Go in the mobile game industry in recent history, maybe ArenaNet would seek to ape Pokemon Go, but instead deal with Polymok instead. Perhaps it could be some kind of product that ties into your main Guild Wars 2 account, reads the minis you have unlocked there so you can battle with them on the mobile platform. There are some exciting ideas, but I wonder if ArenaNet would have had bigger eyes than this, moving maybe even beyond the Guild Wars IP altogether. And the idea of a full-scale mobile MMO, as insane as it seems, 
I think looking at the way the wind is blowing might have been a very real thing they were going for and could have been the sheer scope of it one of the reasons for the project's failure and downfall. Now, on that note, I did just a second ago mention that they might or might not have been on the Guild Wars IP for this project. And I do wonder now whether that was a crucial fact in its failure. Your instinct as a Guild Wars fan and maybe an ArenaNet fan might be that any kind of mobile uh, MMO they deliver should be Guild Wars oriented because as a Guild Wars oriented thing, they can tap into the established fan base. Importantly, tap into the established fan base and not cannibalize it because you're on a different platform than PC. But then, very recently, you have the Diablo Immortal fiasco. If you're out of the loop on this, a much beloved long-term IP from Blizzard Studios was announced to have its sequel on mobile and was met with incredible vitriol and backlash. So I wonder if when ArenaNet saw that, they realized they had a ticking time bomb on their hands if they reveal that the most contemporary, next-gen and up-to-date version of Guild Wars is on mobile, they could be in the exact same boat. Had they gone for a different IP, maybe they could escape it at the cost of some initial sales. But to see what happened with Diablo there would have instilled a real fear in the development team, I think. A real understanding that if you're going to go into mobile, you don't have much goodwill from your community. You need to present something perfect. And every attempt you make to sell it as something good is going to be met with incredible cynicism and a deep belief from your potential audience that you're really only in it for the money or because your publisher said so. I myself over the years have mentioned in no short terms over several video essays and casual commentary streams that I loathed the idea of a mobile product coming from ArenaNet that it would be cringily dangerous for them to announce and I'm not alone. I don't think ArenaNet would have been blind to this culture, particularly in the West, before this whole Diablo thing. But I do wonder if it was something of a straw that broke the camel's back and meant that the studio once again had been working on something for a long time that now was not to be, or at the very least might have had to have undergone several sweeping difficult decisions and changes, pushing a potential release window even further back, and the devs kind of have nothing on their hands for now. So that's mobile, and I wonder what you guys think on that one there. But of course, Arena have been working on more than one side project. What might the other ones have been? And for these, I think we actually have to dial the clock back even further. Because I think it's right to believe that even since 2012, other stuff has been worked on. Several big names associated with Guild Wars 2 and the top level direction and presentation of Guild Wars 2 as an MMO suddenly dropped off the face of the studio after the game came out. Game designers like Eric Flanham, who had been passionately delivering information about these Guild Wars demos, no longer were heard of. Top level world builders and lore architects like Jeff Grubb, also heavily associated with Guild Wars, similarly got very quiet for many years. And then many of them quietly leaving without much of the public noticing. What were they working on and how did it go wrong? Well, on this, we have a lot less we can say. Potentially, it would have been another MMO again, but with a very different visual aesthetic so as not to clash with Guild Wars much and allow the studio to maintain both games at once. Think exactly about how Bethesda Studios juggles its extremely similar single-player RPGs, Elder Scrolls, a fantasy franchise, and Fallout, a post-apocalyptic sci-fi franchise. The two flagship series kind of leapfrog one another, and as players bounce back and forth, each one feels particularly fresh because you've just been experiencing something so very different. I think this is totally what ArenaNet wanted to do for AAA Western MMOs. And I have a little bit more than just wild speculation on this. Six years ago, I remember coming across this PCGamesN.com article. This is shortly then after Guild Wars 2 came out, which revealed a piece of artwork from the studio 
that looked nothing like Guild Wars at all. It was submitted by their art director at the time to the Pixel competition, taken from a supposedly unannounced game project that was all then hushed hushed quite quickly afterwards. I feel quite foolish, honestly, looking back at my original coverage of this. Yes, I acknowledge that it was potentially from another game, but I was far more titillated at the prospect of it being a representation of a futuristic Blade Runner style Canther. Really sitting back and chewing on the facts, particularly in the light of the recent events, I think I'm quite convinced now this was definitely some other project. There is, of course, the potential this sci-fi thing was not an MMO, but instead something smaller and with a more refined scope. But looking at around 2012, all the hype that ArenaNet and goodwill that ArenaNet had generated specifically among MMO fans, I think it probably still would have been that, and that leads a pretty comfortable explanation as to how it eventually ended up in limbo, because the scope of projects like this are just so huge. Juggling that and Guild Wars 2 with its living world ideas and then Season 2 and Heart of Thorns and all that at the same time could have been nightmarish. Don't forget, a lot of their expansion was only recently, and they would have still been working with comparatively more limited numbers back then. The next major project I think they would have given serious consideration is probably something not many of you watching this video would have considered at all, but nonetheless is still a big part of ArenaNet's DNA. In the informative Making of Guild Wars 2 developer art book that came with the collector's edition of the game, there's a simple statement many people forget about and probably isn't true of the studio anymore. And that's the statement that one in four of all ArenaNet employees in 2012 at the time of Guild Wars 2 launching were people who considered themselves hardcore PvP players, competitively minded individuals who were on board with esports and tournaments and making that side of Guild Wars 2 flourish with its heart of the mists and no grind philosophies in terms of getting into it and so on. Hardcore is not my word, it's theirs in the book. And I think it shows. Obviously, ArenaNet, even the name of the studio, has its heart and some of its origins in that world of PvP. And so you have to wonder, how did those people feel once Guild Wars 2 came out? It was later admitted by some of the talent at the studio that Heart of the Mist was essentially a glorified beta by the time the game came out. They missed out on delivering a truly epic experience at that critical window of excitement when the game was first releasing. What might they have wanted to do? I think some kind of competitive oriented project was and should have been in the works. Don't forget, this is still at the height of competitive RTSs as MOBAs start coming in to dominate as incredible powerhouses on esports scenes. And instead of a lot of focus and funding and staffing going to Guild Wars 2's PvP aspects, instead they seem to have been reduced during that window. What happened? Well, maybe they were trying to cook up something new, something that didn't end up working out. And then, many years later, we see even big names like Colin Johansson, game director, leaking off to Amazon Game Studios and the unannounced unknown Crucible that at the Amazon unboxing event I covered a couple of years ago now definitely seemed to be a competitive arena-based experience. I seriously doubt that many of you guys watching this video and in the broader Guild Wars 2 community of today care as much as you probably could have about all of this, and so you won't see much discussion on it, but I think it was probably a real thing going on. So, there you've got three big projects, all of which I think were very plausible to have been pursued by ArenaNet over the years, none of which have come to pass. It's probably worth noting that they may have been looking to follow several bandwagons too over the years. It's probably very hard as a major studio to ignore the pull of battle royales or whatever is in vogue at the time, trying to jump ahead of the market and predict the next one of those. I wouldn't be surprised if some of that was going on, blurring the lines. I think there's evidence that that more than a few studios industry-wide have been caught up in VR only to get to it a little bit early. As an MMO studio, ArenaNet must have been looking into that somewhat, considering just how exciting and lucrative that pairing of VR experiences and MMO experiences remains to be. ArenaNet being one of the few studios out there in the West that might be able to produce something really good doing it. But our evidence beyond speculation for these is near non-existent. It's just what would make sense. Now, initially, 
that this video I was going to move to the other side of the coin and that's okay here's what we think arena net has been making probably and the struggles they might have dealt with what about what we as the consumers actually want to see you have what the studio and NC soft consider as bankable projects but what do we actually think we would put our money behind we are the consumers after all and we know what we have good faith in arena net to deliver and that's a whole other question for us to get into so join me on the next video for the other side of the discussion where we see what we would actually like thanks very much for watching guys let me know what you think and i'll see you next time